Hogwarts Legacy is a game filled with secrets. Welcome back my fellow gamers, it's me Amanda and this is the top 10 Hogwarts Legacy secrets that the game doesn't tell you. So what do you think of Hogwarts Legacy so far? Let us know in the comments. Number 10, Key of Admittance. This puzzle is less of a direct puzzle that you need to find the answer to and more like one of those mystery puzzle games where you have to locate the right items and figure out where best to use them. This puzzle only becomes accessible following the completion of Neem Fitzgerald's trial. Once this quest is complete, you will be able to access the headmaster's office. Once inside, you will need to be at level 3 for unlocking locks with your Alohomora spell. Unlock the level 2 lock, climb the stairs, and unlock the level 3 lock at the top. In this room, there will be a key on the desk, the key of admittance. You can now take this key back down to the headmaster's office, head down the spiral staircase, and from there, head to the end of the hallway, where you will find a big ornate metal door with a large keyhole in the center of it. The key of admittance opens this door and inside you will find a loot chest and a staircase that leads to a field guide page and two more chests. Woo! And friends, before we move on to our next spot on this list, if you love what we do here at Top 10 Gaming and if you want to see more Hogwarts Legacy content here, you can let us know by clicking that subscribe button. Number 9, Year 5? Now admittedly, it's important to note that I've only actually clocked about 15 hours of gameplay so far myself in this game, and much of that has actually been spent not necessarily grinding out that main quest, but exploring and taking in the details of this world. Honestly, there's so much to see and explore and do, and I could just probably wander around Hogwarts and have a great time. And also, all of that stuff is just within Hogwarts too, never mind the world outside, which is also amazingly vast and detailed, at least as far as I've seen thus far. When you start the game, however, you you might be surprised to learn that you are a new student to Hogwarts who is in fifth year? So alas, no boat ride into the school for us, in fact no conventional magical form of transport to the castle really at all. Instead we start the game off by going on a mysterious adventure where we very nearly die before arriving safe and sound but you know, a little worse for wear at Hogwarts, having to find an unconventional way to the school with the help of our escort Professor Fig. Why are we starting as a fifth year and are there others who have done so in the history of the school. We don't really know off the bat, in fact there are many questions left unanswered upon your start of the game, and even 15 hours in, I really only have a little bit more information in regards to others who started in their 5th year. Number 8, Ancient Magic. It seems something we possess in this game that makes us unique is Ancient Magic. What is Ancient Magic? That's a good question. For me right now it's the ability to wandlessly, magically, and yet kinda seemingly telekinetically <laughs> hurl objects at my enemy. But what it means to you changes as the game goes on. Our skills in ancient magic as a protagonist also help us seem to see things that others can't, seeing remnants of old magic left behind, which we are able to also in some cases tap into and even unlock. It turns out we aren't the only chosen one with this ability, but that perhaps in each generation a slayer is born. No, in each generation one witch or wizard ends up gaining this unique power. It's an ability that is acclaimed as being supremely powerful, but so far, other than a limited little bit of history, that's really all I know. Again, the ancient magic angle seems to be a mystery even to our own character, and one that unfolds throughout the course of the game. No explanation given straight from the start. So. It's very interesting how they just kind of throw you in and they're like, there's a lot of things you don't know, so just figure it out. <laughs> you're like, all right. Even your character is like, why is this the way it is? And you're like, yeah, why is it? Number seven, follow the butterflies. This is a quest that you can unlock in the game following your completion of the Jackdaw's Rest quest. This quest is obviously not itself super secret in regards to the game, you know, not telling you about it as it does exist in the game as a named side quest, follow the butterflies. However, the reference is not necessarily explained, and that is the secret that I'm going to let you in on here. This one is actually pretty niche, yet an awesome easter egg I gotta say in reference to the Harry Potter film Chamber of Secrets. When Hagrid tells Harry, Ron, and Hermione to follow the spiders into the Forbidden Forest so they can learn more about the basilisk, Ron laments this task given to them as they head out to follow the spiders, asking, why spiders? Why couldn't be follow the butterflies? Sadly, Ron Weasley is not even born yet here as the game takes place way 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 in the past. 
fast. But I can imagine this would be a quest that he would appreciate were he here. Thanks to Andy Reloads on YouTube for catching this very sneaky reference, by the way. I love it. It's such a good reference. Number six, door puzzles. Something the game doesn't tell you is how to do the puzzles. Though, I mean, of course it wouldn't. What would be the fun in that? However, as much as I love puzzles, I even struggled with some of what I would consider to be somewhat more basic ones. Or, you know, maybe they're not that basic and I'm just not giving myself or the game enough credit here. Maybe I should be like, you know what? I'm sure other people struggle. That's why I'm gonna tell you about it. Here's the deal. I'm gonna let you in on one of these pretty important secrets because you're gonna see these door puzzles pretty much soon after you start playing. I was close to solving this one on my own. I did end up needing a little bit of help, so I'm gonna help you as well. So these are puzzles you can find all around Hogwarts, and the problem really comes from the fact that there is a specific cipher page you actually need to have so that you have all the info to solve the puzzle. Although, even on my own, honestly, without the cipher, as I said, I was pretty close to just figuring this one out myself. I just had the numbers a little bit off. On the doors, you'll see two circles, usually with a number in the center of the circle. On the ring of each circle, there will be three symbols. These symbols can either be a number, a type of magical animal, or simply a question mark or a double question mark. Near the doors, you'll also see what appear to be kind of like dice embedded into the wall. When you interact with these dice, they're basically going to shift faces, revealing a different outward face featuring a different magical animal. The same magical creatures that are featured on the archway above the door that you're trying to open. You don't need the cipher to solve these though. All you need to know is that on the arch, the creature on the bottom most left represents a zero, and the far most right represents a nine like this, with each one basically ascending or descending respectively by the value of one, so like nine, eight, or zero, one. The numbers in the center of the circles are what the three symbols surrounding add up to, with the question mark or double question mark representing the wall dice nearest the door. With this information, all you need are some basic arithmancy skills, and you'll have these doors open in no time. Who needs Alohomora, am I right? Number five, deadliest weapon. When I saw this in Hogwarts Legacy, I, I, I actually figured figured this would be like my calling for combat tactics. I didn't need a guide to tell me that. I was like, this seems OP. We are talking about one of the first magical plants you're going to encounter in one of my all time favorite classes, Herbology. In your first Herbology class, Professor Garlic first introduces you to Mandrake Root before she has a student escort you to visit the Chinese chomping cabbages to feed and also really to harvest them, giving you some cabbage ammunition to start out with, but also acting as a demonstration for how the cabbages work in the game and can be used in attacks. Players have already put time into building their cabbage army and enhancing their plant stats, and it turns out they actually might be one of the most OP weapons in the game. So my feelings about this initially were pretty correct. Do you not believe me that cabbages are OP? Just Google it. Rognar Athio, Rognar Athio on YouTube actually has kind of a demonstration video with tips and tricks for anyone who wants to check out and exploit this insanely powerful weapon, which can reportedly help you to take down bosses in seconds. And there's tons of guides out there as well for how to sort of match your stats on cabbages. But make sure you build this quickly, as at any point, magical plants, including Chinese chomping cabbages, could be nerfed by developers, because that's how like crazy effective they are. Number four, viaduct bridge puzzle. This puzzle seems even more obvious than the door puzzles to me, but I know there are those out there who have found it equally, if not more, challenging to crack. So don't worry, no judgment there. This is uh, puzzles. Puzzles are hard. The viaduct bridge is the large one that exists between between the library annex and the great hall. It is awesome. It is inspiring. It is a bridge. And it has a puzzle on it for you to solve. In order for you to even attempt this one, though, there is a certain spell that you are definitely going to need, unlike the previous door puzzles, which, you know, don't require you to have learned really any spells to attempt to solve them. For this puzzle, you need to know the spell Incendio, because we are going to need to set some because we are going to need to set some braziers on fire. That's right, brazier, not brazier. On the side of the bridge nearest to the library annex, you will notice on the floor a cipher. The cipher tells you what number in Roman numerals you need at each brazier in order to unlock its secret. The cipher itself is actually a trap door which will open once you have successfully matched each symbol to the correct number on the brazier. To adjust the Roman numeral on the brazier, you must cast Incendio to ignite it and then you simply interact with it to set it to the right number. Number three, the Basilisk. This one straight up gave me chills when I was reading about it. Oh, I'm getting them now. Oh my gosh. The Basilisk is a 
creature that guards the Chamber of Secrets in Hogwarts. But while it's been mentioned in the books, seen in the movies, it is not expected to appear in the open world RPG based off of both. Sad. Most people were wondering if, like the Room of Requirement, Hogwarts Legacy also featured this hidden area at the famed school of witchcraft and wizardry. But alas, that initially does not seem to be the case. I say initially because it turns out the basilisk has been spotted, and also because, you know, I mean, this game just came out, so there's things we could still find later. And this user that did spot the basilisk even managed to live to tell the tale somehow. Castile JA on Twitter posted a short video from their PS5 playthrough where they were exploring the Slytherin common room and went to head up some enchanted stairs, but couldn't. At the top of the staircase, down the hall, where they weren't able to go, but where they can see, you can see what appears to be a giant serpent passing through a perpendicular corridor, leaving the player to assume they had just somehow spotted this mythical basilisk. However, some in the comments have claimed this could be an enchanted door or even a glitched out monster of the lake, since the Slytherin common room does exist in the dungeons of the school and, you know, is kind of beneath the lake itself. Number two, Slytherin Saint. While not something apparently in the game, at least not as far as we've seen thus far, there is an acknowledgement of the Chamber of Secrets. The entrance to it has a field page guide for you to collect, though. While not something apparently in the game, at least not as far as we've seen thus far, there is an acknowledgement somewhat of the Chamber of Secrets. The entrance to it has a field page guide for you to collect. This field guide page is located in the girls' bathroom near the Slytherin common room. The field guide page is simply titled Slytherin Sink and goes on to read as follows. Scratched into one of the copper taps on this seemingly ordinary sink, and the girls' toilets is a small snake. No one knows what it means. Number 1. Chamber of Secrets While in the movies and books it's mentioned that the Chamber of Secrets has been closed off for years, with only Tom Riddle ever being mentioned as the one to open it prior to Harry doing so, it has been stated that there is visible evidence in the chamber that it has been open more than once since its construction by Salazar Slytherin. The fact that a descendant of Salazar's is also currently at the school among us fellow Slytherin, who goes by the name of Ominous Gaunt, honestly one of my current Hogwarts crushes in this game, could mean there might actually be some way to open the chamber. Though I imagine Ominous wouldn't necessarily be seeking to do so, since he actually prefers to distance himself from his family and from the Salazar name, ashamed of his ancestors' preference for only pure blood magic users, and you know, ashamed of like sort of the dark wizards and his family, so. I don't know if he's gonna be into opening the chamber, or if it's possible, but just a thing I noticed. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you also are having as much fun in Hogwarts Legacy as I am. Until next time, keep on dueling on. Shoo, shoo!